I've been asked this question multiple times, so I'm finally making a video about it. And the question is, how do I work with domain-driven design without an ORM like EF Core that's going to persist my domain model to the database? I'm going to show you one solution using the Memento pattern and writing plain old SQL queries. So we have our rich domain model here, which is the member class. And you can see that it accepts multiple value objects representing the email, first name, and last name. Using an ORM like EF Core, we can easily map this complicated data model into the database by defining a few simple conversions from the value objects into the values that are encapsulated inside of these value objects. And then when we are materializing from the database, we define a conversion for how to convert the columns in the tables into value objects into memory. Without an ORM, this becomes a little tricky. Now we have to manually take care of persisting this data model into the database. And when we are querying the database, we have to somehow materialize this data model into memory. So how do we use the Memento pattern to solve this problem? The Memento pattern, and it's also known as the snapshot pattern, allows us to save and restore a previous state of the object without revealing its implementation details. So the approach I'm going to take is I'm going to create a snapshot object for my member class that's going to be something simple that I can easily map to a SQL table and then I'm going to combine conversions from my rich domain model into my snapshot and from my snapshot into a rich domain model. So let's start out by creating our member snapshot class. I have the member snapshot here, so let's define the properties that we need on the member snapshot. The first is going to be the ID, and I'm going to give it a get and an init setter. And then I'm going to create the properties for the email, first name, and last name, which are the value objects in our rich domain model. But in our member snapshot, we're only going to be using primitive types. So the email is going to become a string, and I'm going to give it a get and init. And let's copy this and create two more properties for the first name and the last name. So I'm going to define the last name. And I'm going to define two more properties for the created on and modified on date and time. Let's give the string properties some default values so that we don't get the code analysis warnings. All right, so this is our member snapshot. This is something that we can easily map to a SQL table because we don't have the object relational impedance mismatch that we have with our rich domain model. So something like a GUID, a string, a date time is supported in a SQL table and we can map to the database one to one. Now that we have our Memento or snapshot object, the next step is to go to our member class and define a method for converting the rich domain model into a snapshot. So let's go to the member and let's add a new method here which I'm going to call to snapshot. So let's go and make it here. It's going to be a public method and it's going to return a member snapshot. And I'm going to name it to snapshot. All we have to do inside of the to snapshot method is return a new member snapshot instance. So let's go ahead and create it. And let's populate the property values coming from the rich domain model. So we're going to set the ID to the current ID. The email is going to come from the email value object. So we're going to say email value. The same is going to apply for the first name. It's going to come from the first name value. And then the last name is going to come from the last name value. And let's also set the created on and modified on date and times. All right, so we have a method for taking our rich domain model and converting it into our snapshot, which is our member snapshot class. Let's also create another method that's going to take our member snapshot and create our rich domain model instance. So we're going to say public, and this is going to be a static method, which is going to return a member, and we're going to name it from snapshot, and we're going to accept a member snapshot instance. So let's go ahead and define it, member snapshot. And what this is going to do is, it's going to return a new member instance based on the snapshot. So let's go ahead and return a new member instance based on our snapshot. So I'm going to create a new member and we're going to set the ID from the member snapshot ID. We're going to set the email by calling email create, which is our value object. And we're going to pass in the member snapshot email. And then we're going to take the value from the create method. And we're going to apply the same approach to the first name and last name. So the first name, which is going to come from the first name create. And we're going to set the first name property. 
and also the last name which is going to come from last name create and we're going to set the last name property and then we have the created on which is coming from the member snapshot directly and also the modified on date and time which is coming from the member snapshot so we have our method for the creating our member which is our original main model from the snapshot which is our member snapshot class so with these two methods in place we can now go ahead and implement our member sql repository which is going to persist our rich domain model into the database using the snapshot pattern i already prepared a base implementation here and i'm using the ef core context which is already configured just so that i can easily get the idb connection instance which i'm going to use to write the sql queries to persist the rich domain model using the snapshot pattern let's actually start from the add and update methods the first thing we have to do when we are persisting the member through the repository is convert it into a snapshot so we're, i'm going to create a new variable which is going to represent our member snapshot and i'm going to call member to snapshot and now that we have our member snapshot instance inside of the snapshot variable we can easily write a sql query to insert a new record into the database so let's go ahead and do that I'm going to use Dapper to write the SQL queries. So I'm going to say DB connection and call execute. And let's define our SQL query for inserting the member. So we can write something like this. Insert into, and then we specify which table, which is the members table. And now I need to define which columns I'm inserting into. So I need to define the ID, the email, the first name, the last name, and so on. I'm going to stop here and omit the created on and modified on date and time on purpose to make this just a little bit simpler. And now we need to write the rest of the insert statement. So we have insert into and we define which columns we're inserting into and let's define the values. So I'm going to define this as a verbatim string so that I can move this into a new line to make it easier to read. So I'm inserting the following values and I can say at ID, at email, at first name, at last name. So this is the Dapper convention for specifying parameters in your SQL query. And now I can just go ahead and specify my snapshot object. And Dapper is going to take care of mapping the properties on the snapshot object, which are primitive types right here, and is going to insert them into the members table. So this is how we can implement the insert method. Let's go ahead and use this same approach to implement the update method. We start out by converting the rich domain model, which is the member, into the member snapshot. So let's go ahead and call member to snapshot. And now let's go ahead and write our SQL query, which is going to update our member. So I'm going to say DB connection execute and let's define our SQL query. So I'm going to say update members. Then I need to say which columns I'm setting to which values. So I'm going to set, set the email to the email parameter and then follow the same for the first name, set it to the first name parameter and the last name, set it to the last name parameter. So like this. And I need to define a where statement to tell it which member I want to update. So where the member ID is equal to the ID parameter and all of these are going to come from the snapshot instance. So now Dapper is going to take care of mapping my snapshot object again into the arguments here to update the member instance. And I'm going to filter the members table to only update the member with the specified ID. One thing to note here is that this is going to call the database straight away and it's going to be a synchronous query. I implemented it like this because the methods for adding and updating a member in my repository are synchronous but we can make them return a task and make them async and call execute async here if we want to make async calls to the database. If you're enjoying this video so far about the memento pattern, make sure to smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Now that I showed you how we can do inserts and updates with our rich domain model and SQL, let's see how we can read from the database and use the snapshot pattern. So let's go to the get by ID method and try to implement it. And the first order of business here is we're going to query our database, look for the member with the specified ID, and we need to materialize a member snapshot from the database. 
I'm going to define a member snapshot variable to hold my result for which I'm going to load from the database. We're going to await an asynchronous call and I'm going to call DB connection query first of default async and I'm going to specify member snapshot as the generic argument here and this is going to be the type that Dapper is going to materialize when returning from the database and now I just need to write a SQL query to load the member snapshot into memory. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say select and we're going to select the ID, the email, the first name, the last name and let's even materialize the created on date and time. So created on UTC and modified on UTC. And I'm going to say where the ID is equal to the ID argument or I can even name it member ID to make it more readable and I'm going to specify it in an anonymous object as the next argument. So I'm going to say member ID is equal to the ID that we get in the repository. So we loaded our member snapshot into memory using Dapper by executing a SQL query on our database. So the next order of business is check if the member snapshot is null. If it is null, there is nothing to convert into a rich domain model. So if the member snapshot is null, we just return null from this method and we're done. So this takes care of the first situation if the member snapshot is null. Otherwise, we need to convert our snapshot instance into our rich domain model. So if you recall, we created a member from snapshot method and we're going to call it, pass in our snapshot and we're done. This is going to convert our member snapshot into the rich domain model and return a new member instance from the get by ID method. So this is how you can read your rich domain model from the database using the memento or snapshot pattern. Let's call our API endpoint for fetching the member from the database to see how our implementation in the repository behaves like. So I hit the breakpoint inside of our new member SQL repository and we are inside of the get by ID method. We're first going to query the database to fetch the columns from the members table where the ID is equal to the member ID that we specified here. And hopefully if the member is found, we're going to materialize a new member snapshot. And if we take a look here, you can see that we do indeed get back a member snapshot instance. And now if the member snapshot is not null and it isn't, we're going to call the member from snapshot static method. So let's go ahead and see what we have here. And here we are just initializing our member rich domain model by setting the properties directly. So at the end of this call, we have a rich domain model that we're going to use inside of the get member by ID query handler. So I can say continue here and return from this method. Let's also take a look at what happens when we are doing the reverse and converting from our rich domain model into our snapshot. I'm going to use the update member endpoint to send a put request to our API, which is going to hit our repository and execute the call to the update method. As you can see, we hit the breakpoint inside of our SQL repository. And the first thing we do is we create a member snapshot. We do that by calling the to snapshot method that we define on the rich domain model, which is our member class. And we just create a new member snapshot by simplifying all of the value objects into their primitive types. So we get back a member snapshot instance. And now we execute a SQL query to update the members table where the ID of the record in the table is equal to the snapshot ID. So after this call, the member is updated in the database and we can complete our command handler and just return from our API. The unfortunate downside to this approach is you're going to end up with a lot of to snapshot and from snapshot methods. And the larger and more complicated that your domain models are, the more complicated these snapshots are going to become and all of this mapping logic is also going to be cumbersome. Maybe it can be simplified by using some mapper library, but I leave this up to you to explore if you want to use this pattern. I really hope that you enjoyed this video about the practical implementation of the Memento pattern and until next time, stay awesome.